Is Islam a threat to the West? We have to identify first which Islam? My Islam and the Islam of the mainstream Muslims or the Islam of Ayman al Zawahiri? No need a wish and why should I bet? Well, it I don't care. <laughs> when any scripture can be understood the right way or the wrong way, if fundamentalist right wing evangelicals going to understand Islam the way Al Qaeda does, this is their own problem, not our problem. <laughs> we cannot defame a whole religion and dehumanize and demonize 1.5 billion people in this world. You need to know what is the threat to the West? It is negative, negative stereotyping. Dehumanizing people to promote or to justify their oppression. To justify violence against them. What is really a threat to the West is to promote hatred among students. To label your fellow student as your enemy. This is the threat to the Western liberalism, to the Western pluralism, and to the Western multiculturalism. This is not an ideology, this is a mental space. I'm sorry. I'm Egyptian, by the way. I came from the land of the pyramids. You know how many pyramids do you have in Egypt? Not three. About 118 pyramids. The three are the three bigger, the biggest pyramids. Constructions of stones, but we also have human pyramids. Heroes that will never be forgotten. Among them is Colonel Mustafa Hafiz. Colonel Mustafa Hafiz was an officer in the Egyptian army. And he was assigned in the 50s to found the Palestinian resistance against the Israeli occupation. He trained Palestinian, fire, Palestinian uh, freedom fighters. That's true. And he was assassinated by the Israelis. He is a, an Egyptian pyramid. And I feel pity for him. Because I feel that he is unresting in his grave. He's unresting in his grave. Because his daughter, Nuri Darwish, called him a terrorist one day. Sorry. She called him a terrorist one day. But he has 750 other million daughters who are honoring him and they are very proud of him. This is not an ideology. Uh, my job is very uh, difficult now because they addressed a lot of issues. I have to address it quickly in these two minutes. But I start with the last thing the manipulation and the deception saying that. Three quarters of suicide bombers came from Muslim countries that are not occupied countries is falsehood. This book is called Dying to Win, written by Robert Pape. He's a non-Muslim American researcher, Dying to Win. He said, and I agree with him, that suicide bombing is a terrible phenomenon and I hate it and it has to stop. But if you want to stop it, you have to go to the root cause. This man discovered that poverty is not a reason. It's not a motive. Well, number one in Al-Qaeda is a billionaire. Ignorance is not a motive. Number two in Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri is a holder of two PhDs. The real motive is occupation. He found that the probability of having a suicide bomber among any people will increase 11 times if they have foreign troops on their land, whether they are occupying troops or perceived as occupiers by some groups. You want to stop suicide bombings? I also want to stop suicide bombings. You have to deal with the root cause. Pull back your troops. What else do you speak about? Well, uh, 
why Churchill didn't like Islam? With all respect to Churchill, but Churchill was leading the UK, Great Britain at the time when it was a colonizing power. <laughs> Islam, let me say this clearly whether you like it or not, Islam doesn't allow its followers to accept slavery. And occupation is a form of slavery. I wish I can take it. Uh, I, I graduated from a Coptic Catholic school, by the way. 12 years in a Coptic Catholic school. I have a lot of Coptic friends. None of them ever complained that he is oppressed. But the issue is, some Copts like to claim that they are oppressed or say outside that they are oppressed. Only Copts can be granted visas easily to the US and to Canada to have asylum. But other Copts refuse to do that. I had a Jewish Egyptian friend in school, by the way, among the Jews who refused and rejected the state of Israel, and they said, we are Egyptians, and we're staying here. Until today, I go and I send this watch to be fixed uh, 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 to a Jewish uh, watchman. <laughs> speaking about, speaking about killing the infidels, Or Surah al verse, uh, 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 chapter number 9. <coughs> there are, in the same Surah, in the same chapter, it is telling us about three different types of disbelievers or unbelievers in Islam. Anyone who is not a Muslim is an unbeliever for Muslims. Muslims are unbelievers for others. That's not an insult, it's a status. The first type is sincere Covenanters or sincere people to their agreements. It says, those of the non-Muslims with whom you made an agreement, then they have not failed you in anything and have not backed up anyone against you, so fulfill their agreement. This is in chapter number 9, verse number 4. So as long as they are true to you, be true to them. Surely Allah loves those who keep their duty. What else? Those who, the, the, the second type of non-Muslims is the type who seek refuge with the Muslims. This is chapter number 9, verse number 6. It says, And if one of the non-Muslims seek your protection, grant him protection, so that, may, so that he may hear the word of Allah, then escort him to where he will be secure. This is because they are people who do not know. Let's talk about the verse that says fight them. It is talking about the third type of non-Muslims, which is those who revoke their covenants. <laughs> Verse number 12 in the same chapter, chapter number 9, it says, and if they break their oath after their covenant and taunt you for your faith, then fight the leaders of, of unbelief. Surely they do not respect their oaths so that they might, so that they may desist. The next verse. They plotted to expel the messenger and took the aggressive by being the first to assault you. So they assault first. They talked about jihad and they made jihad look like it's a, it means terrorism. The word jihad equals terrorism. I know that the word jihad scares people. It makes people panic. Four years ago I was in Germany giving my lectures in the book fair in Frankfurt. And uh, every day at 5 p.m. when the book fair uh, 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 shuts down, thousands of people are coming out at the same time, so it's very crowded. It's very hard to find a place in the train, in the metro, to go home. So it's very disappointing. You wait for like half an hour. Trains come, doors open, no place even to step in. So there was this German journalist waiting next to me, and he told me, would you like me to tell you a secret? I said, sure, he's German, he was in Germany. I thought that he would tell me, let's go and walk to a further station or something. I said, sure. He said, if you want to find a place in the next metro, when the door opens, shout loudly saying, Allahu Akbar! <laughs> My religion tells me that if you are harassed verbally by an ignorant harasser, just ignore him. Say peace. So I just ignored him. He told me, would you like me to tell you another secret? <laughs> I said, yeah, please. He said, if you want to be alone in the next metro, when the door opens, shout 